Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Bill Hilf, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here with you this morning. Um, I have only a few slides uh, to share with you. What I'm going to spend most of my time on is uh, talking to one of our customers here on stage. Um, I think the, the customer stories that we're hearing uh, yesterday and, and today just now, earlier, from Doug are are the best indicator of where Cloud Foundry, the project, and the community and its customers are today. Better than hearing vendor blather um, about what we're all doing um, to, to build products around Cloud Foundry. So I've been at, at Hewlett Packard Enterprise for three years. Actually, three years coming up in, a, in about a week. Um, and it's been uh, an absolute joy to work in the Cloud Foundry community and, and be part of the foundation and on the board. Uh, and I'm going to talk a, a lot about that, the importance of that, uh, and some of the things that happen uh, behind the scenes to make this all go. Uh, so I thought in the morning I would start off with all the corporate marketing slides and then take you through deep marketing slides for about 20 minutes. Is that good? Everyone good with that? <laughs> awesome. Uh, no, actually, in, in, in reality, I want to make sure uh, you understand why HPE is in the business of, of Cloud Foundry, why we are building products with Cloud Foundry, uh, and, and why we're, we're doing these things. A lot of people think of HP classically as a printer company, PC company, server storage uh, company. So often I'll get the question, why are you in the developer game? Why are you working in, in, with, with a PaaS platform, an application platform? And I want to take you through that a little bit uh, before we, we go too deep. We, uh, we spend a lot of time with our customers. Uh, we target the large enterprise and large governments. We, tar we target all sides of businesses, but I would say our, our focus primarily is on the very large enterprise. And so we do get the uh, benefit, frankly, of working with customers and understanding their uh, requirements, but also their complexity. Uh, and I'll just sum it up. For many of you who have been in the space for a long time, uh, I've been working with enterprises my entire career. Um, and the, the CIO statement that best sums it up is, is something I've heard in many different languages in many different uh, ways, although I only understand one language, so I'm, I'm presuming they're all saying something important to me when they speak in different languages, uh, including Klingon, for all my Klingon friends out there. Uh, one of the things I hear a lot is, Bill, I have one of everything. I have every database that's essentially been created. I still run Spark systems. I talked to a customer yesterday that is the number one customer for Sybase databases. They have more Sybase databases than any customer in the world, and they're a very large bank. We have customers that run legacy systems, vintage systems, they call them sometimes. And these systems are frequently very, very strategic and critical to the way that business runs. Sometimes we naively think, particularly here in Silicon Valley, we naively think, ah, just cut those apron strings, silly enterprise. Move to the new world. See the Facebook infrastructure. Be like Google. Pull your own sheet metal. Lay cork down. You can do it. And the reality is that's not what these businesses do. These large enterprises are not in large scale out infrastructures where they can easily just roll out a distributed operating system and away they go. Many of them have critical systems, sometimes life critical systems, that need to work and grow as they build to the new. And so that is the genesis or the root of what we call hybrid. And so a lot of the work that we do at HPE is helping customers go through that journey of taking their existing business systems and building the new applications and new services, and in many cases, the new organizational and operational models around that entire environment. That's what hybrid means to us. So that this first area that we call transform to a hybrid infrastructure is one of our core four transformation areas. These four slices of the pie represent the, represent the HPE strategy and how we see the different challenges that customers are having as they think about moving to a hybrid, protecting more and more in their enterprise as things become digitized, really empowering uh, from analytics up the, the entire business, and, and of course, how do they enable their, their employees and workforce. But from the, from the transformation to a hybrid infrastructure, this is absolutely where Cloud Foundry and our Helion portfolio, which is the name of our portfolio products for all the cloud things that we do, um, really fit. Because these are technologies that we're building to help customers build apps, build services that allow them to move across those traditional and new environments. You notice I don't use the words public and private a lot. 
I'm really trying my hardest, I really am, to eliminate those words in front of the word cloud computing. I'm trying really hard to make public and private go away from our vernacular. Thank you. I will pay you later, Australian man. <clears throat> The reason why is, it's, I think in, in five years' time, maybe longer, we'll look back at, at those words as very simple, uh, very, in many cases, wrong. Because the enterprises that I talk to, and I, I talk to enterprise customers literally every day, do not think in this very simple, naive construct of, I have a public thing and I have a private thing. They already run extremely hybrid environments across multiple data centers, some that they own, some that they don't. They're used to co-location, they're used to hosting, they're used to building their own, they're used to renting. So those, that's the reality that enterprises are in. So as we look at technologies that can help those customers move forward in their strategies and their agendas, Cloud Foundry, where the core value proposition is multi-cloud, fits perfectly for those types of customers. That's why you're hearing these awesome stories about what I think Doug said, 30% of his environment now running on Cloud Foundry at Allstate. That's awesome. I mean, that is freaking awesome. I'm a customer of Allstate. I think it's awesome. Not Snapchat, not you know, the, a, a newfangled company, but Allstate. And that's part of the reason that, that I think we should all be so excited here is it's not just happening for file new types of deployments and greenfield deployments and developers saying, I'm going to hack something up on my own and stand it up. It's happening for mission critical systems. And that's a very special time this community is in. I've been fortunate to be part of open source communities at various points of their evolution. Probably the most notable one that I'm thinking of that went through a similar evolution was the Apache project. And a lot of the things I'm seeing with Cloud Foundry remind me of that, where there's a point in time where it literally goes nonlinear and there's a breakthrough moment where the next thing you know, Apache became a verb to web servers. And that's happening now with Cloud Foundry. So rather than have me blather about it uh, even longer, I'm going to invite someone up to, to, to share some of these stories. and I'm going to talk with them about the journey they've gone through. This is a customer that has been I'm dealing with, with large systems and large applications for a long time. Uh, and I'm going to invite uh, Jason up to talk to us a little bit about their journey uh, and spend some time with us on stage. So Jason, come on up. Jason Armstrong from Travelport. Thanks for joining us, buddy. I didn't, I didn't just select the, the other guy who was exactly my size out of the audience. <laughs> um, uh, but thanks for coming out and, and talking to us. Anytime. Uh, so, Jason, tell, tell the group here about uh, your role, what Travelport does, some of the things you told me about Travelport, about the business that you're in, and, and how these, these folks might be using Travelport, but they don't even know it. Excellent. So, uh, welcome. This, good morning. My name is Jason Armstrong. I'm a director of enterprise services and middleware at Travelport. Um, Probably never heard of Travelport, and that's okay. I'll share a little bit about it with you. Uh, Travelport is a travel commerce platform. So what we do is we work with those travel providers that you work with, and they work with us, and they, through our systems, they can book, sell, share, search for any travel option through our travel products. For example, many of you flew in or, or probably staying at a hotel this week. More than likely, your travel provider is worked with Travelport in order to book, sell, and, and reserve that, that travel for you. And, and so Travelport's been around about 40 years, is that right? Yep. And so what, what is your role at Travelport? And then maybe tell us a little bit about how, why, you, why you chose Cloud Foundry. So uh, my role at Travelport is to lead a team that's implementing a lots of different tiers of our cloud strategies. So um, I have middleware traditional engineers. I have the operating system type of engineers. I have the senior developers in the more creative area of um, cutting edge service development. Awesome. And, and when you were looking at technologies to choose or platforms to choose, what was it about Cloud Foundry that resonated? It was the vendor lockout <laughs> and the option that with Cloud Foundry, we had one consistent way to be able to push content, to scale content, to develop applications. It's actually funny, one of the, the, the beauties of Cloud Foundry was it embraced a term that a lot of people at Travelport hadn't heard of, which is 12-factor apps. Um, 
so to us, it's the add-on of by going to a Cloud Foundry solution where no matter which data center you're in within our, our complex of environments, whether that's cloud or within our personal data centers, um, it's the same experience for those developers. The engineers have some work in the back end to deal with different distributions, but for the development team, which is the core where our revenue comes from, they have that. And so I got to ask, Jason, what, did you look at other options? Did you look at uh, other cloud technologies or other application platform options before you made that decision? Absolutely. Um, we actually evaluated for a period of about six months all of the different options for cloud frameworks. Everything from Docker, Ansible, there's lots of vendor solutions I can name. Um, you all probably know them very well. Um, and we kept coming back to it each time that we looked at the different flavors. Uh, we really looked at Cloud Foundry as, wait a second, there's an open source community, it's very robust. Um, our goal was to create an environment where we could implement best practices in the community. You, all of you out here are the ones that kind of convinced us to go to Cloud Foundry because you convinced us that there are best practices that could increase our pro productivity. There was best practices that would enable us to deploy faster. And there was best practices for how to cut our costs by using a centralized system like Cloud Foundry. Awesome. One, one thing that we talked about, and I, I think this is maybe one of the most important aspects of, of the transition that we see customers go through, is the technology, certain, there's tons of technologies out here, the technology is one aspect of moving to a cloud-native applica application platform. But something that Doug also mentioned this morning, tell me a little bit about the organization. To, as you moved, if you, as you shifted left, you know, both metaphorically and literally, as you shifted left, what happened to the org? What happened to the culture at Travelport? Or it, what's happening? Because I know it's in progress. Yeah, it's currently well. in progress. Um, and what we're seeing so far is that by shifting left, and, and there, there's a love-hate relationship with the word DevOps, but shift left is the friendly term we use for it, which means we're pushing more responsibility to the left side of the diagram where traditionally development people are. So the development community is taking on roles such as coordinating their builds, doing their own regression testing, uh, managing their deployments, production support. But in fairness, that leaves the right side of the diagram able to spend more time keeping the infrastructure up for those development teams. So where traditionally they were spending a lot of time in the infrastructure side troubleshooting services and helping memory tune and other things, with Cloud Foundry, what we're seeing is a shift where those responsibilities for tuning and tweaking applications have moved to the left, and the operation side is now focused on, can I keep my servers up? Is my monitoring re uh, resilient? How are my customer experiences? Awesome. Uh, and and what, for, for customers out there in the audience, what would you recommend, what tips would you give them as they're, because you're, you're on the journey, as some are considering how do we get there? Because I talked to someone last night who's literally here just taking notes and learning before they take the you know, first step. What would you recommend to them? That's a great step. Um, the community is excellent. Like I said, I, kudos out to all of you for being such a great community because you're responsive. We, when people post items to boards, you're very responsive. So I, I'd encourage them to go out to the community and find out how they're working. Go up to the meetups and the things like that. The, the other important thing as a big enterprise, and, and, and I make no qualms about it, we're a big mainframe shop that has a whole lot of open systems around it, um, it's hard to shift your organizations. So you really need to brace them and bring them into the process. So where we brought in our network team and said, look, look at how many firewall requests you don't have to do. Look how many load balancer requests you do not have to do anymore. You can spend more time looking at the cool new load balancer strategy versus having to worry about, oh, I have to implement 15 new load balancer requests today. So um, by kind of bringing them into that process, security, server engineering, all of them, they really got excited about the possibilities of how they can do, have more time to do the cool things. Great. Thank, and Jason, w one last thing. A year from now, what does success look like? So you're, you're in process of this, and you, you're, the, the organization's moving there. Where do you want to be in a year? In a year, um, we're hoping to move a, many of our microservice APIs. So again, the pieces of our travel commerce platform that agencies and travel providers are hooking into, to have them hosted closer to those vendors. Um, so success is basically having Cloud Foundry instances running both in our data center and across the globe, where we can actually have an experience where an Australian agency calls an Australian service, which we happen to know that the data is coming from the Australian airline, 
why come back all the way to the United States to our personal data center just to go back out to Australia to get that data? Again, success for us is being able to co-host that with the, with the benefit of reducing that development time, reducing that deployment time. That's an extremely important part for us. We're, uh, we're a very quick moving uh, industry in travel. And if you don't keep up, you're going to quickly get behind. And those nimble deployments and, and uh, processes are what we're looking for. Great. Jason, thank you very much, man. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. I think what the theme that you're also seeing from, from, from Allstate and Travelport is th these, are, these are businesses that, that had to make this transition that would be out of business if they were not moving this direction and taking advantage of the things that, that we're seeing with cloud native application platforms. So I, it, it's something we were talking about backstage a little bit. It's not so much, hey, could we do something like that? Would that be interesting? It's really survivability. Um, how do you make a, get to the point where you're able to work at the speed of development to, and, and reach your customers at the speed of development because time has become the, the critical variable in, in extracting and delivering uh, value to customers. I got just a couple more things I want to talk about. Um, one is about this slide here. And I'll tell you, six, seven years ago when I first really, really started spending time with, with large enterprises and government agencies about cloud computing just generally, um, I would never have predicted this slide seven years ago. I would not have guessed that all of these types of vendors and customers would come together in some sort of community uh, to build something related to cloud computing. <clears throat> uh, and to see how far, and this isn't just a marketplace where people stuck up their logos in some NASCAR-like experience to slap something up on a slide. To get on the slide means you're putting non-trivial money and time into being part of the foundation. Uh, and I mean, it's, it, it's, re it's real time. Like, there's real work that happens uh, to make to, for all of these uh, uh, members to participate. And I think this here, the, and, and if you just look at some of the brands on here, uh, look at the six, I think, that were announced yesterday um, that, that came into to the, to the foundation. Um, it's truly remarkable. And I don't think it's because we're all just happy-go-lucky guys and gals that like to get together. Um, I'd love to believe that, um, but I'm not as, as, Sam does a better job of, 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 the, of the Zen stuff. Like, I'll let Sam stay in that, in that zone. I believe this is because the commercial market is demanding it. I believe because we're, we're in a different phase of cloud computing where it's becoming much more synonymous with IT. I think the word cloud is starting to mean IT in many ways. And so because of that and the large, complex, heterogeneous requirements that enterprises have, this, the market has demanded a multi-cloud application platform. That's why this group exists, and that's why it's come together. But I just wanted to say thanks to all the members uh, who've been part of this. And I would say even a year and a half ago or so when the foundation was just being thought of, uh, or a couple years ago, um, I don't think anyone would have guessed the, the amount of membership and the growth of this community. It's truly remarkable. And take a moment, really, at why you're here to have deep and authentic conversations with people in this community because I think Cloud Foundry really is at that liminal moment of growth. That's exciting. So as part of that, uh, one of the things that we do at HPE is, is we want to help continue that growth. So we're announcing today a new dojo in Seattle uh, that is open now. Uh, and this is the one picture that we took of Seattle that didn't have rain and clouds. But it looks really nice. We call this interview weather when we're trying to hire people. Um, but we're really excited by this, and, and the model of, of, of how, and, and, and many thanks to Pivotal for, for helping establish the, the model that exists for how contributions happen um, and, and how you build high-quality software, uh, and we're very happy to participate by opening a Seattle-based dojo. We're not doing this because it's just my hometown, maybe kind of. Um, we're actually doing this because there's a, a very large growing ecosystem uh, in the Seattle and the Puget Sound area around cloud computing. There's a couple really big players in the market there in terms of Microsoft and Amazon, but that's also created a, a pretty significant ecosystem of, of other uh, startups uh, and a pretty big uh, developer community. So we're very happy to be, uh, to be hosting that dojo in Seattle starting today. Um, I would also add, um, as you think about the, the, uh, one of the fun parts of coming to events like this is I ran into literally eight people, eight, who have all worked for me in different companies all out that I met in the outside of this room, and they're all at different companies now, uh, eight, eight different companies. 
and I, I would like to think they're all here because I'm so terribly charming and they came to see their old boss. That's not it. They've all gone off to different roles where now Cloud Foundry is seated all over uh, in, in these different companies, some vendors, some customers, um, some people doing you know, services business, businesses around, around Cloud Foundry. And that ecosystem, just think how fast this has happened in the, in the amount of time that growth has happened. It's pretty remarkable. So with that, I'm going to close. I'm going to give you my email address and my Twitter handle. Um, I, I do want to have your feedback on how things are going, not just with HPE and, 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 uh, and what we're doing, certainly to take any feedback except about my hair and being bald. Can't write me about that. Can't tweet about that. Uh, I get really, really sensitive on that subject. Um, that's because I'm not Australian. Um, but I do want to hear back, uh, I do want to hear fr from you how you think the Cloud Foundry project is going as well, because there is a lot of, of still shaping and molding and growth that's happening in this project, which makes it so vibrant and exciting to be part of. Uh, so feel free to, to shoot me a mail with your ideas and thoughts. With that, thank you very much. Have a great time for the rest of the event. <laughs>